Welcome to Career Cafe, a podcast to help you thrive in the professional world. Listeners, welcome to our podcast episode on the power of first impressions, dressing for success, and reimagining handshakes in a post-COVID world. Uh, Joining us today, we have Jerry Ross, Clara Webster, and Brandon Street, and myself, the moderator, McKinley Hatch. And uh, let's just start off talking about the importance of dressing for success and why that is so crucial in the job search process and interview process. Yeah, I think this is uh, an important topic because um, the way that we dress, I think, does a couple things. Number one, it dictates how we feel about ourselves in situations. Uh, I think, you know, as we go into a situation that's professional, if we underdress at times, um, sometimes we feel like we don't belong in that atmosphere or we may undersell who we are or um, those types of things. And so I think it's important to understand the environment you're going into and ensuring that you dress Um, accordingly to be taken serious as a professional, um, but also, again, to have that confidence that you need uh, to network or whatever it might be doing you are doing at that uh, event. I like to say you never get a a second opportunity to make that first impression. And we've all been in places where you see someone wearing something and you're like, oh, they must be important. And I think part of it is determining that you feel important when you walk into the closet the night before. I will always lay out close the night before I have the opportunity to make a first impression. I don't want to wake up in the morning and the iron, you know, blew whatever junk was in there onto my fresh clothes. Like I want to make absolutely certain the night before that it's going to be perfect and I can do everything to set myself up the next day. And I think it's just confidence too. When you come in and you put on the best that you have to walk in there, you feel different about yourself. You walk with a little bit of extra spring in your step and starting in that first moment, gives you some confidence that you're going to expand upon once you get into that situation. Yeah, and whenever you're attending any of these like networking events, interviews, informational interviews, career fairs, you know, whatever kind of professional event it might be, um, I always like to tell people, you know, the only thing an employer should remember about you is, um, you know, that you looked professional and all the different things that you talked about, all your skills and qualifications and all that kind of stuff. You know, you want, you want to look professional and make sure that you kind of fit in with that outfit too. You know, I know I've said this over and over in this podcast, but um, one of the main things we're trying to do when getting hired is build trust with an employer. And that trust is established initially in that first impression, right? Um, because the first thing I, uh, I learn about you is what I see. Um, and um, some of the first things that come out of your mouth too, right? And so I think, again, it's important to ensure that, that we're dressed for the occasion to ensure that people look at us and go, I'm, I already can trust this person for whatever reason, right? They they took the time to look good to come talk to me today. I think that builds trust in employers to know that. Um, and then when you approach them in a professional manner and, uh, you know, the first things out of your mouth are professional, I think all of those things are adding up to building this trust, which ultimately is the reason that they hire you, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and I think having like a I'm going to get a job today outfit Right, just having that yeah. one special outfit that you don't wear anywhere else that's just your best that you have, that's your I'm going to get a job today outfit. It really projects professionalism, confidence, and, and credibility in what you have to say. Yeah, I love it. Make them remember you by who you are and what you talked about, not by what you wore, right? Like, right. It, you know, dressing mm-hmm. professionally is huge, hugely important. So um, let's talk about knowing the dress code, right? Uh, we talk about different types of dress, such as formal, business casual, and casual. Let's talk about the difference between those and knowing what you should be wearing, right? There's certain jobs, right? Uh, we talk about this a lot, that you maybe don't have to dress super, you know, your tuxedo. Just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not a job. Anyway, yeah, Clara, talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, within the yeah the three kind of main different types, formal, business, casual, and casual, um, there really ever shouldn't really be any type of, you know, professional, either like interview or career fair, things like that, where you're showing up in that casual dress is what I usually recommend for people. You know, you want to show them that you're professional, just like Brandon was saying, you know, kind of build that trust, show them that you're, um, you know, there to, uh, you know, be the best either employee or, you know, whatever it may be for that situation. Um, So yeah, casual is typically not one you're going to be wearing to different events. And of course, that's, you know, casual, just what you wear every day, shirt and jeans and stuff like that, right? 
Um, now, business casual, that's the most common type of uh, dress in the workplace. Um, typically, it can be either like a nice blouse or a button-up shirt, um, either slacks or like a skirt on bottom typically, sometimes even a dress. Um, that's typically kind of that business casual that you see. Um, and then the formal, that's um, typically um, pretty like, I guess, I guess boring colors you could say, you know, typically like black, navy, dark gray, <laughs> you know, typically like there's not a lot of variation going on there. It's very professional. Um, typically a suit um, for, you know, males or females, um, typically a tie, <laughs> you know, for males. Um, and then for females, typically like a blazer and then either like a knee length skirt or slacks on bottom. Um, and that's like your, that's like Jerry was saying, that's, you know, I'm going to go get a job today. That should be a more formal type outfit. Um, but there are some situations, um, where business casual is also appropriate. Um, like for example, one of my first jobs when I was a, um, student worker here on campus was as a custodian. Um, and if I showed up to that interview in a formal, you know, in a whole like blazer and, you know, skirt and everything looking really, you know, super professional, it might kind of send the wrong impression. Um, and so like in that kind of situation, business casual would actually be more appropriate. Um, and so it's important, you know, as you're in these different situations, just to know kind of the differences uh, between formal business casual and casual and know when the best place to use those are. I think you bring up a good point because I, when I was younger in my, my career, uh, I, I met with a um, uh, employer that hired truck drivers. And uh, he told me, if someone comes in in a suit and that I'm not hiring them, you know, I want people to be ready to work. And, and so it's right to know your industry, know the environment. If you've done your, your homework up front, hopefully you'll know those things. But some of our blue collar jobs, they don't want you to be in a suit. They want you to be ready to work. If I hired you now and you can go get in the truck. Now, that doesn't mean that we dress super casual. I still say dress one step above what you would, you know, what you'd wear on the job. Um, but, but at the same time, know your industry, don't overdress in some occasions, but don't underdress either in a professional setting. Yeah. Like, like a truck driver could show up to an interview in a polo, right? Right. And if you're one step above that, if you're expected to work every day in a polo, you show up with buttons the whole way down or more of a semi, you know, business casual outfit for ladies. Like I always think one step above is where you need to be. So gauge the room before you get there and elevate your dress by one step prior to getting there. Yeah. What about dressing for, let's say you have a Zoom interview or some online interview or just other online interactions. Doesn't have to necessarily be an interview. Maybe you do an informational interview, kind of that. What would you wear in that case? You know, with uh, Things have changed a lot, uh, even with COVID. I mean, we had, obviously, uh, some of these video interviews, but they weren't as extensive um, or prevalent as they are now. And I think, you know, I still coach individuals that when you're interviewing over Zoom, it'd be, I'd give the same advice I would to someone interviewing in person. Um, ensure that you dress, um, you know, in a way that, again, you're portraying confidence uh, to yourself, but also to uh, the employer. You're making that first impression. I know some people said, well, you know, I had the suit coat on up top and pajamas on the bottom. You, that, you know, and, and, and you can, maybe you get away with that and that's fine. But, but my point is, is do you at that point feel confident and ready to interview? Do you feel professional and ready to interview? If you do, that's fine. But the point is, is that just put yourself in, uh, you know, the setting to fill those types of things as you go into the interview and, and leave that good first impression with the employer. Yeah, and maybe, you know, maybe something happens with like your lighting or, I don't know, your dog comes in the room and, you know, if you have to stand up and you got pajamas on bottom, you're probably, <laughs> you know, probably not going to get hired. It's, it's your Hawaiian likely, shorts so. don't fly here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> they're like have a button up shirt and then they have to stand up <laughs> it's like spongebob yeah exactly. whatever. Right. <laughs> um awesome yeah thanks for talking about that i think that's really good advice is just act as if you are in person right right and it does mm -hmm. like i love what jerry mentioned the confidence like that's your interview outfit you know before whether it's in person or not like you it helps you know with confidence and everything as well and help you get into that mode. We know mindset. that dress affects the way we <laughs> think and behave. And when, when we worked remotely for work, I, it probably was three or four months that we were working. Maybe it was longer. I don't recall. But to, uh, there was an extensive <laughs> period of time we're working from home. I would get up in the morning and I would get dressed as if I was going to work. I did not work in um, shorts and things like that because I just didn't feel productive. I didn't feel like I was 
in a work setting at those points. So that's just personal to me, but I just felt like that it did affect the way that I felt about myself and, and the way I approached my work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have that same feeling as well. I was struggling with productivity working from home during COVID, and I intentionally changed my dress code because I felt more productive when I'm formally wearing what I would have been when I was in the office. It just got into my internal psychology a little bit, and I was more productive when I did that. And I think there's a lot that goes into that process. Yeah, yeah speaking of working from home with, uh, you know, COVID-19 and things. Let's talk about shaking hands, you know, as you're going to interviews and meeting and greeting people, how do we navigate handshaking in the post-COVID world? What does that look like right now? It's a great question, and it gets a little bit tricky, but um, I think it's important as, you know, as, as you're approaching, to understand that people are on different levels here. Um, there are still people who do not want to shake hands. I think that we've returned to normal somewhat with with most people, but there are still people there, and you need to be cognizant of of those individuals and respectful of those individuals. And uh, so, when you're approaching individuals um, in an interview or in a professional setting, um, I usually suggest you know um, kind of take your cues from what they're doing. If they reach their hand out and you're comfortable, shake their hand. Um, if they reach their hand out, you're not comfortable, just you know just explain to them very quickly say, you know, I'm not shaking hands yet at this point, but um, but it's really nice to meet you and make sure you follow that up so they don't feel uncomfortable with what they did too, you know what I mean? Um, and just let them know you're grateful for the opportunity and those types of things. But but the, the same uh, goes for the other side table. If they don't want to shake hands, don't take offense by that. Uh, just, to, just make sure that they feel comfortable. Well, just again, follow up. It's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me today, you know, and, and, and play that play that off naturally, but take cues from them, um, whether they keep their hand to their side or whether they extend their hand, that's a great way to understand what, what they'll be doing. Yeah. And I, I tell people, you know, definitely, yeah, try to read the room and take cues, but, um, you know, even if like, well, here's a story that I have, for example. So during COVID, um, I went and had an interview and I, I walked in and I thought I, you know, I was like, oh, I think these people want, you know, shake my hand. It's good as the person getting interviewed to try and initiate that. And so I went up to the employer to like shake their hand and they went, oh, actually, can we do elbows, please? You know, they stuck out his elbow to me and I, and we did that and I was so embarrassed and I was like, I probably just lost the job because of that. I, you know, started, you know, getting into that uh, mindset anyway. Um, but, you know, but I ended up getting that job and, um, and so I always tell people, you know, even if, you know, you try and read the room and maybe get the wrong cue, um, it's better to be the person that would, you know, like if you're a student, it's better to be the person, you know, kind of initiating that professional um, handshake and then to, you know, to have them go, oh, actually, never mind, rather than kind of doing nothing at all sometimes, too. And 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 just like Brandon said, don't take it personal, right? Or don't, you know, freak out like I did and think, oh my gosh, I lost the job or anything like that. Um, it's just a weird, you know, thing from COVID now, but usually I tell people, you know, try to read the room and if you feel like they would, you know, be comfortable, go ahead and initiate that just because it looks professional. And, you know, most employers are going to appreciate that you did initiate it rather than, you know, think, oh, they didn't, you know, kind of initiate that handshake sometimes. And so anyway, so... I always like to share that experience so people feel more comfortable with kind of initiating that first handshake. I have an outgoing, energetic personality, and I'll just ask, right? And I feel like sometimes we can ask and kind of get what are the different comfort levels in the room. And I also feel like that sets me up for things that may further happen during those conversations, and I'll just ask. Also, we haven't touched on this, but there's some cultural differences too. There's people that don't want to handshake culturally and different things. And I've been on a hiring panel where after someone left, they talked about the dress. They were less conservative than they wanted them to be. And down to feet is an interesting thing with making sure that toes are covered. Other cultures do different things. There's some things in there about seeing the bottom of feet in different cultures to where when we're talking about these, we want the both sides of the interview and the interviewee to be as comfortable as they can be, making sure that you're representing all cultures. Your interview day is not the day to test your boundaries. <laughs> True. Yeah, let's, let's not do that. That's great. Um, We've been talking about nonverbal communication with handshakes. Let's talk about other nonverbal cues and how those impact first impressions. 
uh, well, we know the majority of our communication comes from nonverbals. We do. Um, and, and so it's important to, again, ensure as you're preparing for interviews and, and meeting with professionals that um, you understand what your typical nonverbals are and what you're sending with those nonverbals. If you tend to be an arm folder, right, um, at times people can um, uh, interpret that as being closed off or being cold. Um, and if you um, happen to be a foot tapper, um, people can interpret that as being nervous or uncomfortable being around them, those types of things. So you need to be aware of your own cues, but also um, practice uh, cues that you want to display confidence in. And that, that means eye contact, uh, that means smiling, uh, that means uh, controlled uh, voice patterns. There, there's a lot to those uh, that means sitting up and displaying confidence that way, right? And and using your hands when you talk, um, yet not over extensively. So there's there's all those things that can display confidence, but also give you confidence. I mean, we know the research that's been done on this. Amy Cuddy did uh, research on on this uh, kind of spatial. Um, uh, non-verbal communication and how having taking up bigger space even by sitting up in our chest broad things like that we display um, a little bit more confidence and feel that right as as we speak to people I love eye contact right and and I can read a lot from a person from an interview side off of early on in the meeting I will mm -hmm. gauge where do the eyes go to create and recall and then later on, I can do the same thing. But if someone is giving me great eye contact during our conversation, I feel a better connection. And I'm not looking and trying to read cues as much as I am just trying to make a connection and figure out whether they can help what we need or can we help what they need. And I'm really big on eye contact and making sure that eyes aren't wandering all over the room. I think that's one of the tips I heavily give when we're talking to people about interview preparation is look at me. Don't be creepy. <laughs> but look at me right. as we're mm -hmm. talking because they're so nervous and they're trying to get someone to say yes. Um, but looking at them, I think, is a strong thing that we can do to improve that contact. How much is too much eye contact? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Depends. Staring contest. Yeah. It, it does depend. And I think you can feel it too sometimes yes. when you're looking at somebody, you're like, mm -hmm. why am I not blinking? Mm -hmm. Why am I not looking away? What's wrong with me? You know. Um, so I think we can feel that naturally a little For bit sure. too. If no. your eyeballs are starting to burn, that's too much eye contact. Starts <laughs> crying because yeah. you haven't blinked in a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hate to bring this up because it's so sad that we even have to talk about this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Personal hygiene and grooming, you know, like yeah. preparation. I know we've all had what we call, I don't know, horror stories of like, where we're interviewing people and it's like, wow, I'm surprised that they would <laughs> appear at an interview like this. Right. But it's, we do need to talk about it. It is something. So let's talk about personal hygiene and, and you know, preparing for an interview, making sure your hair is brushed and combed through and all of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I always just tell people, you know, kind of same thing that I said before, you don't want the employer to uh, you know, or sorry, you only want the employer to remember, you know, what you had to say and the things that you can, you know, bring to their company and, and those types of things, right? You don't want them to walk away, um, you know, thinking about anything related to your outfit or, you know, any of your personal grooming or anything like that. So just make sure um, that you just, you know, look well maintained, you know, that your hair's done um, make sure your nails are, you know, trimmed um, that you're, again, you know, that your outfit looks good and, um, and also, you know, make sure hygiene wise, you know, it's sometimes uncomfortable to talk about, but, you know, make sure that your teeth are brushed um, or that you've had a mint, you know, before you go in there um, make sure you've got a good appropriate personal scent. And that can go either way. Right. You know, make sure that you you smell nice, but also, you know, make sure you're not like overpowering, you know, with your perfume or cologne or anything like that. Um, just again, you know, you don't want anything to be a distraction. Uh, and taking away from what you can bring to that employer. And I think this, this is your first opportunity to describe how you're going to be every day. So if you are unorganized, disheveled, dirty nails, unkept teeth, or whatever we want to talk about, this is the best they're going to get. So they understand if you're not kept that day, there are going to be many days where you're going to be worse than what you did today because they mm -hmm. think this is going to be the best that you have to offer. Yeah, super true. Yeah, thanks. Um, there was one time we were doing an interview and um, not in this job, in a past job for like student worker roles and everything. And we're all sitting there interviewing and um, we had 
we could smell their breath from across the the room and like we left to go get um, lunch and come back and the room still smelled like that for like hours and it was just like yeah making sure that you're you know doing that brush your teeth have a mint yeah for sure. Yeah. Because now, unfortunately, that's all you remember about that <laughs> yeah. interviewer, right? Or Still to this day, right? Yeah. yeah. Instead of what they could, you know, give to your company. So. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's talk about, um, we'll wrap it up on just individual style and kind of being true to yourself and your personal style while also trying to understand the company maybe you're interviewing for and their different, you know, expectations and whatnot. Yeah, I think you, this is a, an important topic because I've ha- I've sat with students before who said, you know, I kind of told them and coached them how to dress and, and things like that, um, perhaps jewelry in some regard, uh, piercings, things like that, tattoos, lots of different things we've had conversations about. And I've had students, uh, liter- I mean, they've literally said to me, well, if they don't like me for who I am, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, that, you, I mean, we need to take that in consideration. If you're if you're working for an employer and you want to be able to portray yourself in a certain way, then maybe don't apply to that employer, right? Like, find an employer who would appreciate you for who you are. And I do think that's important. But at the same time, if you do want to work for that company, we need to make some adjustments um, to make sure that we uh, – we're making that impression we want to that employer, right? Some employers are more conservative. I tell, I coach people, uh, you know, approach an employer as if they're very conservative because most are because they're making hiring decisions, right? So they're conservative in nature at that point, even if their nature isn't to be that, right? And so approach that in a way that, um, that they are approaching in that conservative manner. And so, yeah, maybe take a piercing out, maybe cover up some tattoos initially and things like that. Um, or again, find an employer that fits who you are, who you know would appreciate you for who you are. But I think authenticity doesn't have to change by doing those things either, though. When we talk to people, we can still be ourselves, not somebody else as we interview, and, and, and we can be genuine in our answers and things. Yeah, and I think recruiters generally are more conservative. So there's like a little bit of a shift happening right now where applicants applying for jobs want to be accepted as who they are. But you have to also understand recruiters are conservative. Now, if you take something out or cover something up on your interview day, are you still the exact same person? You still have the exact same skills and qualifications that you had, but you don't have something showing. And when you show up to work, if you have that thing, you're still the same person, but you lost an opportunity to make an interaction with a conservative person. So there's definitely different ways to view this, right? You want them to hire who you are as a person, but also you want to make sure that you're also not making them uncomfortable, not putting them into a spot and kind of, it's interesting how this is going to be in the next few years with yeah. mm-hmm. yep. that first impression. I think it ultimately comes down to like bias and unfair judgment, right? Like a lot, you had said, you know, recruiters, maybe you're the same person, you're covering it up. Maybe they don't want to see that, but it's just so we all have that. We all have personal bias. We all have, you know, unfortunately, judgment that is uncontrolled a lot of the time. And we're all working on that, right? Like first impression, bam, you're thinking maybe, you know, some certain things about them with the way they choose to, you know, style themselves or whatever. But to avoid that, you know, um, we recommend to let them judge you based on your characteristics and your qualifications rather than, you know, what you're wearing, maybe what earrings you have in or whatever that looks like, right? Yeah, and I don't know if we'll always be able to control those biases because part of being human means that we're trying to protect ourselves. And when, as an employer, we're trying to protect our business, you know, and so some of those biases come in as a as a protection, right? And a natural mm-hmm. protection for us. And so again, as, as a job seeker, we just need to understand that's the viewpoint that they're taking as we approach them that again, we don't need to, de- to change ourselves. We're, we're not defined by, you know, what we're wearing or, or things like that. We're defined by who we are. And so we want to make that impression of who we are and, and then settle into our job otherwise. Right. Yeah. Um, awesome. 
Thank you guys so much. Thanks, listeners, for tuning in to Career Cafe. Subscribe and share our podcast with your friends and other T-Birds. And connect with us on social media, SU Career Center, and through our website, su.edu slash career center. And tune in next week for our episode on navigating the interview arena, the do's and don'ts, uh, online etiquette, and mastering the about me question in an interview. Um, So, Clara, are you going to close us off today with a dad joke? Yes. Um, People think that being a waiter isn't a respectable job. But hey. It puts food on the table. (laughs) (laughs) It sure does. That's my favorite. Love it, Clara. (laughs) Awesome. Tune in next week. Thanks.